We have our friend Amparo calling from Texas. Oh, Amparo. I know. It's been a and year. She, I know. It's been forever. And she's trying to get through every webcast, so she finally got through. Oh, great. And she's okay. got a question about close reading and conceptualism. Okay, great. Thank you. Amparo, how are you? Oh, I'm so fine. How about you? Oh, they're good people. Can <laughs> you hear me? Yeah, we hear you fine. It's been a year since we talked to you. And yeah, here you are, I, still doing Mudpo. Are, yes, and I will do the third time next oh, year. Oh, fantastic. And you I, are still a teacher, am I right? I just retired as a special education teacher. Oh, congratulations. And I was in teaching profession for almost 45 long years. Wow, wow. congratulations. Retirement after 45 years. I'm Caro. That's yeah, really cool. And here you are hanging out with us. Uh, we're honored. Oh, the uh, privilege is mine, my pleasure. I have a question. It's about the close reading. I am intrigued every now and then when you give us writing assignment. Yes. In, uh, as we close to conceptualism, I am wondering why you always insist on the how, but uh, keeping it more significant rather than the what. Yeah. And in the essay rubrics, it is really very interesting to follow your prompts about how we peer assess everything. Yeah. I don't, and I, I cannot see your concept behind that for me because how is equivalent also to what? Yeah. The point. Well, that last thing you said totally trumps everything else because eventually it is our contention that the how is the what, that the how becomes the what. But I, I think it's a great question, and I would like to ask uh, the folks around the table uh, what they think about that. Amparo is saying why the rubrics are very interesting when we guide people to do peer reviews and so forth. Why insist on close reading and why the, the, the focus on the how? We've talked about this a lot, but uh, why don't we say some more about it? So um, let's do really quickly. Can mm -hmm. we do really quickly? Yeah. So let's get the portable mic to Kirby. Sorry, Kirby, you're on the spot. You'll be one of those. Everybody respond very quickly. So we'll, we'll start here at the table. We'll go to Kirby and then to uh, Dave, Max, and Molly. Uh, Jason, quick response to Amparo? Well, in my office hours, we close, I close read with Audra Crane, mm. um, Base Poppies by Jennifer Scapitone, and we discovered that the poem that it's based on, um, Sea Poppies, is, was written in the same year as the Gallipoli attacks mm. in um, World War One, and so the question of Oz and, and Ottoman became much, uh, not just random words, but we were, I mean, we were close reading the poem and these things came out. So that's not event versus um, what I wanted to the, are you the saying question, to Amparo that that stuff wouldn't have come out had you not done a close reading? Right. Okay. And as well, I would say that part of our focus in, on the how has to do with the poem as a kind of event, and so um, each poem as an event is both something that happens at the time of being written and happens at the time of being read. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Lily, a quick thought on this for Amparo? Yeah, I think um, this question, the answer is slightly different maybe in different chapters of Modpo. In When we're talking about conceptualism or even um, chance poetry, I think that, and this isn't to say that other poets aren't focusing at all on on how like other poets outside of the course or or even earlier in the course or something but the idea being that conceptualism foregrounds both how and what um, at the same time so um, your reading of the poem is inextricably linked with the concept it's like maybe the most like n not very intellectually rigorous definition of conceptualism like um, as you're reading the what you need to be always thinking about how and maybe also why 
um, because that's sort of what the definition of the concept would be. So um, you could take the same what out of the context of the concept and it might not really mean that much or it might seem silly or it would just be a news report that you co block copied or whatever, but in the context of how the concept, it, it means something more. Yeah. That's really helpful. Thank you, Lily. Kirby, a quick thought on this? Quick thought, uh, Amparo. I, I enjoyed so much our uh, exchanges uh, on the, uh, the writing assignments, my fellow Filipino, and uh, we've had some great conversations. My thought is close reading for me is astronomically important. I didn't close read before. It's through Al I'm on, a, on a course a long time ago that I started to realize close reading is profoundly important and I stick with that. I am less convinced about the how, but I'm learning from Al. More and more, I've always felt traditionally, it's the content, it's what's being said that is really the gist of the poem. And I'm still resisting the how as being as important, but my, my, uh, my feelings are that that's changing, mm -hmm. that the how is important, whether or not I value it as much as some others in this course, uh, I don't know, but I'm learning and I'm open. Thank you, Kirby. And, and, and if pushed into a corner, at least, you know, rhetorically, I mean, if pushed into a corner, uh, my last defense as a teacher would be to say, um, yes, there needs to be a balance and we are being hyperbolic sometimes in focusing on the how, but I see it sometimes as a corrective because the world of reading and understanding things, such as newspaper stories about tragedies and so forth, there's so much superficial reading and there's so much content focus that, for instance, in journalistic coverage of you know, world tragedies, we have to understand the how of the journalism, the journalistic method, in order to be able to critique the content of the piece. If we just take the content of the piece, we're getting something that's signed, sealed, and delivered typically by a you know, a media conglomerate that may have all kinds of methods and ways that we haven't investigated because we left the how out. So basically we wind up using how as a kind of hedge against 99% content, which is what a, our world is full of. So basically we're trying to make it 3% how and 97% what? There's so much what. I think we need to be asking how and it's a fundamental question. If you ask what, sometimes you never get to ask why. If you ask how, you're always going to have to ask why. Um, um, so let's quickly go to Molly, Max, and Dave on this question for Amparo, and then quickly back to Amparo, and then CJ's question, and then we're going to start to wrap up. So Molly, your thoughts on any of this, Amparo's question, and the how and what, and all that? Well, Al, I was just thinking the same thing, that the how gets you to the why, and the why gets you to, uh, why is it so important for writers of all kinds to explore these issues of language, and why are we so concerned with um, appropriating or freeing or uh, altering or breaking down or doing all the different things we do with language, and why is language so important to us, and that's... Yeah. That's really the, the underlying thread of all this work here. Really well put. Thank you, Molly. Uh, Max, your thought on any of this? Sure. Um, I think that the... Well, I was thinking about this the other day, but I think that the, the how, or like this kind of attention to form, right, that's what we're talking about, is, is weirdly like a way to actually get back to these kinds of questions of like, of like hidden meaning and intention and objectivity and like all of these things that people usually want to find in content. But yeah. uh, but it's actually I think in the how where you you get that because you get something like say like in, in attention to form you uncover things like meta moments or meta gestures and so you get something like you know Emily Dickinson wanted to write you know a poem because you have her poem but then like what happens in the form that that reveals some kind of like hesitation or awareness of what she was trying to do and the shortcomings of what she was trying to do and what she wanted to do. And I think that's so you actually get like a far richer picture of, of what the, the poem sets out to do, what the author sets out to do with this uh, increased or added or uh, renewed attention mm. to, to form and to what is encoded in form about a, a poet's process, right? 